The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Powermatic, the gold standard since 1921. And by Rockler Woodworking and Hardware. Create with confidence. Now, if you've been following the Wood Whisperer saga over the years, you probably know that this shop space is attached to a house. In fact, it's the house that I used to live in. Well, now my parents have moved into it, and that means my mom is right next door all the time. So uh, that means free lunches. It means Dunkin' Donuts coffee served in sweet Chihuahua mugs whenever I want it. And it also means that I have a little bit more work to do. Uh, the house interior is very Southwest. We are in Arizona and it's very common around here. And I think my mom is pretty much just done with that look. She's ready to move on to something a little bit more contemporary. So here's what we're doing today. We're gonna take an old door. And in fact, the house is full of doors that look just like this. It's a nice hickory frame, uh, solid hickory. And the panel is of course plywood, but with a hickory face on it. The hardware and the applied molding here at the corners is really what makes this piece look Southwestern. So I looked at the door and I thought, you know, with a little bit of work, I could refinish this door and actually make it look fairly contemporary, really simplify it. We change the hardware and all of a sudden you change the entire look of the cabinet. And this way we don't have to spend any extra money. We don't have to rebuild the cabinets, replace them. It's just a great way to sort of use our skills to do something that saves a lot of money, very practical. So it's not the most glamorous project in the world, but hey, these are the ones that I think really count when you could help out a family member and uh, save them some money. So we're gonna try to take all of the doors in the house from this look to something a little bit closer to this. And this one is already refinished. It's got a nice water-based uh, high performance, general finishes, high performance top coat on it with a new piece of hardware. I don't know that she's gonna stick with this hardware, but this is something I had laying around that's a little bit more modern looking. And you can see how much of a difference it makes. Um, not only is the finish refreshed, it's a little less yellow now, um, those moldings really make a big difference in the appearance of the piece. So uh, this one is just much more simple, you know, much more contemporary and doesn't really scream Southwest at all. So um, let's get to it. The real challenge here is to try to not damage the door any more than necessary as we do the work to it. So let's get started. Before doing any work, it's a good idea to remove any hardware that might be attached to the door. After a full inspection, I was relieved to see that the molding was not glued to the panel. Instead, it was attached with tiny brad nails. That means all I need to do is pry the molding off with a putty knife. Now, you might be tempted to use a chisel for something like this, but a chisel has a much greater chance of gouging the work. And furthermore, if the brad nails damage my putty knife, it's really no big deal. Fortunately, all the molding came off the door, leaving nothing more than a few small brad nail holes. The next step is to remove the finish. I find a detail sander makes quick work of sanding around the edges of the panel. I start with 120 grit and work my way up to 180 or 220. My biggest concern at this point is making sure that the molding outlines are completely blended in with the rest of the panel. I use a regular 5 inch random orbit sander for the center of the panel. Although the brad nail holes are fairly small, I'm going to fill them anyway. Hickory has very deep grooves and grain lines, so I have to be careful not to spread the filler around too much. While the filler dries, I can remove the finish from the rest of the door. A card scraper does a fine job of removing the film finish and saves me a bunch of sanding. Whenever possible, I'd rather see the old finish drop to the floor in thin ribbons rather than in a form of dust or toxic chemicals. Since the door has a nice chamfer around the edge, it's important not to round that over. Something like a sander would be very difficult to control on this narrow profile, but the card scraper works perfectly and maintains a nice crisp edge. You could even use a block plane here, taking very light passes if you prefer. The rest of the door gets scraped thoroughly, once I start to see brown wood shavings mixing with the white finish shavings, I know I've gone far enough. I should also mention that I'm only working on one side of the door. There's really nothing wrong with the interior of the door, so there's no reason to refinish it. The scraping saved me a lot of trouble, but I still like to do some sanding. The edges and profiles are sanded with a wood block and some sandpaper, 
and the rest of the door frame is hit with a random orbit sander in either 180 or 220 grit. I then take a bit of 220 grit paper and break all the sharp edges all around the door. Since I plan on using a water-based finish, I'm going to pre-raise the grain with some water. I spray the water on the surface and let it soak in for a couple seconds and then wipe off the excess. Once the door dries, the entire front surface gets a nice light 220 grit sanding and then I blow off the dust with a few bursts of compressed air. The finish I'm using is General Finish's High Performance and as with any sprayed finish, I like to use a filter to strain it first. Spraying the door is a piece of cake and here's how I do it. I spray the outside edges first. Now when you spray the edges, the overspray tends to get on the face of the door, so that's why I follow up immediately by spraying the face. Cross grain first, followed by a second series of passes with the grain. This gives me a fairly generous coat and complete coverage on the horizontal surfaces. Water-based finish dries really fast, so within 30 minutes, I'm applying another coat. The door gets three coats total with a light 320 grit sanding in between. So with the new hardware installed, our door is pretty much done. It wasn't a whole lot of work and certainly wasn't very much in the way of materials, but we have given these cabinets a new lease on life just by making a small modification and refreshing the finish. So I hope you'll take this to heart and think about the cabinets in your own home. Maybe you don't need to replace them. Maybe with a little bit of work, a little bit of ingenuity, you might be able to turn your cabinets into something that looks fresh and new and it doesn't cost very much to do. Now, I gotta say, my mom is gonna be thrilled with this and it's like they always say, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. And I think this door is probably worth about five turkey sandwiches for lunch for the next week. Now I just have to see if that deal works with mom. So thanks for watching. I hope you go on your own little adventure in your own house and find some things that you could modify and improve on just with a very small work and material investment. Thanks for watching.